Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcast, through Rumble, through YouTube, and through Spotify. Today we continue in our study of the book of Romans. We're in chapter 14, verses 14 through 18, which reads, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet, if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. That's Romans chapter 14, verses 14 through 18. Today we return to our study of Romans chapter 14, where we are shown how the servant of the Lord operates with someone with whom he disagrees. The issue in this chapter is between the weak and the strong brother. Since the weak brother has a sensitive conscience with regard to certain non-essential issues, like whether to eat meat that has been sacrificed to gods, and the strong has a clear conscience regarding eating said meat. The strong brother should yield his rights so that the weak brother might be able to grow. God gave the dietary laws to Israel in the law of Moses for sanctification reasons, so that we might have a better quality of life while on this earth. Not to be confused with our justification, which is based solely on the work of Christ on the cross. Our sanctification includes the wise choices we make in order to garner us a better quality of life. However, the law of love trumps these dietary laws. So in this case, the stronger brother, the one who has a clear conscience to eat the meat and drink the alcohol, he makes the choice of the servant to give up his right to do so in order to not cause the weaker brother to stumble in his walk with the Lord. In verse 14 of today's passage, we read, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. The Apostle Paul begins with the fact that he got these teachings directly from the Lord Jesus himself. And as a result, he has been convinced that the strong brother has the right to eat certain meats and to drink certain drinks, and to choose to worship corporately with other believers on the day of his choosing. His point has been that sin does not reside in things like food or the day we choose to worship God in a corporate manner. In verse 15 of today's passage, we read, Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. The goal for all of us is that we make choices based on our love for the Lord and his people. The word destroy means to ruin. When we cause a believer to stumble, it has the potential to shipwreck the faith of that weaker brother. Often the Greek word used here translated destroy is translated very frequently in the scriptures with the word perish. It can mean eternal damnation. In fact, it is used in John 3.16, which reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. And of course, according to 2 Peter 3.9, God is not willing that any should perish. When this word is used to describe believers, this word perish, it is used to describe some kind of spiritual loss in their life 
but not the loss of their salvation. It could mean that they have fallen out of fellowship with other believers, or it could mean the loss of their joy or their effectiveness in ministry, as we see in 2 John verse 8, which reads, Look to yourselves, that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. So, when we cause our brother to stumble, we could cause him to lose some spiritual blessing. When we do this, we have not acted out of love for the weaker brother as a servant of the Lord. We are most like the Lord Jesus when we help the weaker brother. So, Paul calls us to build each other up by not causing each other to stumble and to suffer some spiritual loss. In verses 16 and 17 of today's passage, we read, Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The words spoken of as evil means that when we deliberately cause a weaker brother to stumble, we cause the gospel to be harmed. When we do this, the unbelievers around us are given a poor example of the nature of Christianity. The kingdom of God produces righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Notice that the Holy Spirit produces this type of life. These three, righteousness, peace, and joy, are gifts of God. And they're enjoyed by a group of believers who are in fellowship Uh, with one another. And we do not produce this kind of life among us. This type of life is delivered by the Holy Spirit as we honor God's culture by being defined by Him and His Word. In verse 18 of today's passage, we read, For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. At the end of the day, eating certain meats is not the issue. Since Christ loved the weak brother enough to die for him, we ought to love him enough to be cautious about how we exercise our liberty in front of him. If it is our desire to be used of the Lord for the advancement of his kingdom and his world, we will do this. As servants of the Lord, our concern must not be our right to eat or drink. Our concern should be about the advancement of God's righteousness, peace, and joy in the lives of those around us. The word approved means to be approved after close examination. Whether we like it or not, our lives are under the close scrutiny of the world. We don't need their approval, but we need them to approve of the Lord. And what they need to see is our love for one another. So, You see, we don't want to cause a brother to stumble in any way so as to impact unbelievers wrongly and to forfeit our witness. This just undermines what God wants to do among us. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.